Now is the time to listen to the experts. Scientists are our best hope to end the coronavirus pandemic. Research labs around the world are racing to create a new vaccine. The idea is to simulate an infection while avoiding the possibly severe symptoms of COVID-19. Once vaccinated, our immune system should destroy the virus if we are exposed to it. According to the WHO, there are currently more than 60 teams of scientists working on a vaccine. Under normal circumstances, it would take more than 10 years. But thanks to previous research efforts, there is a chance this process may be fast-tracked, with human trials already underway in some cases. But scientists agree that it will still take months until a vaccine is approved. When will a corona vaccine be ready? A vaccine that enables us to resume our lives without restrictions while protecting us from the disease. I'm afraid we need to be patient and keep our distance for a while longer. And let scientists do their job. Like here in Berlin, where a biotech company comes up with promising results. Berlin is empty. Those who can are staying at home. But these lab technicians can't work from home. For them, there's more work than ever. The chemists at the JPT Peptide Company are regarded as systemically important, since what they're producing here could speed up the search for a coronavirus vaccine. We're creating peptide-based tools that enable the vaccine developers to monitor the immune systems of patients in treatment and attract them over a certain period of time. Peptides are amino acid chains that make up proteins. This company creates hundreds of thousands of them and assembles them so that they resemble the coronavirus's most important surface proteins. The scientists have been working on this project since January. Their work will contribute to research about the possible effectiveness of a vaccine. In the race for a coronavirus vaccine, some scientists are focusing on the development of vaccines based on messenger RNA, or mRNA. This involves injecting a person with the instructions for part of the virus. This would then spur the body to partially produce the virus. This, in turn, encourages the immune system to develop antibodies. Then, if the real coronavirus strikes, the person would be well-equipped and able to defend himself or herself. Whether that will really work is what's being tested with the tools being developed here. JPT's technology has already been used in the fight against the Zika virus and Ebola. The Berlin-based company is indirectly involved in the race for a vaccine, since it belongs to BioNTech, a German company at the forefront of the vaccine race. But for JPT, it's not about competition. I think that's the wrong way of looking at it. At the moment, it's really about getting a vaccine onto the market. It doesn't matter who does this in the end. It's about making a contribution and maybe being among the first to do so. But right now, it's truly about fulfilling the ethical duty to help. The technicians here seem to feel the same way. Yes, absolutely. You think you can contribute to making people healthy or even healing them. It's very motivating. Yes, sure. But I do have mixed feelings. On the one hand, I'm afraid. On the other, I know I have something important to contribute. It's exciting. It certainly is. A new test could be ready soon. And many are placing their hopes in the effectiveness of an mRNA-based vaccine. The whole world is waiting for a vaccine. But even though at least 60 teams of researchers around the globe are working to develop one, no one expects a rapid breakthrough because producing a vaccine goes through several stages and that takes time. Now, in a first step, the virus and its effects on the human body are analyzed. Now, this is necessary to determine the composition of the vaccine. Potential vaccines are first tested on animals and later on, this procedure is followed by testing human volunteers. Now, if all those tests are successful, 
The vaccine has to go through a lengthy approval process, and only after that, mass production can begin. Now, this process usually takes up to 15 years, but thanks to new technologies, development can go a lot faster today. And for more, I'm joined by Klaus Zichotek, president of the Paul Ehrlich Institute. That's the German Federal Institute of Vaccines and Biomedicines. Good to have you with us. Uh, so, first of all, I mean, should uh, a COVID-19 vaccine be fast-tracked? And if so, what stage would be best to skip? Definitely, we are fast-tracking the development and there's nothing to skip, but rather to combine, which means uh, we are given highest priority at the Paul Ehrlich Institute to the developments and to our regulatory advice. And in terms of, uh, let's say, shortening the development time, what we're doing is there are a focused number of animal studies that have to be done, for example, general pharmacology, toxicology, or defining the dose in animals that will be applied uh, to humans in the first step. And then, uh, of course, um, we also have to combine clinical trial phases. So there is discussion whether some of the developers would combine phase one, phase two, or phase two and three, and uh, increase maybe the number of uh, general subjects that will be enrolled in these studies. But we need to be very careful with the assessment and with the development as usual. But of course, we can concentrate, focus, and shorten times. All right. Well. I Time, of course, is of the essence uh, of, of all those studies uh, underway at the moment. Which one is the most promising, you say? Well, I think we need a variety of um, COV-2 vaccine developments. Uh, what we're prioritizing currently and also the developers are prioritizing is RNA, DNA vaccines and also vectored vaccines because they have the advantage that we know exactly which parts of the genetic information and safe genetic information of the pathogen can be included in the vaccine. We know this from preparatory research work also at the Paul Ehrlich Institute on most coronavirus vaccines. And in that respect, I think we are safe. Okay, but what, what about uh, production capacity? Developing a vaccine is one thing, but then once we have it, will there be enough for everyone? And should everyone get it? I think, first of all, uh, those who are at risk should get it first, uh, at risk for severe causes of uh, COVID-19, but also at risk for being infected, uh, maybe at more risk than others. And number two, manufacturing will be no issue. Specifically, the RNA and DNA vaccines can be manufactured in a large amount of doses in quite a short time. We're talking about a million doses or so within a time period of four weeks. And that's the real advantage of these new vaccine platforms, as we say. And uh, by the time we have a vaccine, the pandemic will quite probably have peaked. Are we actually working on a vaccine for a future pandemic? Yes, we are. I think uh, we learned already from uh, the Ebola epidemic that we had in West Africa, and we're taking these kind of learnings to the development here of the SARS-CoV-2 vaccine, but uh, we will use the time in any case to develop these platforms so that we are ready and uh, quicker ready than this time to have a vaccine if the next pandemic may arise. All right, Professor Zichotek there from the German Federal Institute of Vaccines and Biomedicines. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Now, time to address more of your questions. Uh, and please do keep them coming on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter or via email. Because our resident corona expert, DW's Derek Williams, stands ready to provide some answers. The WHO says getting vaccinated against pathogens that cause respiratory ailments like pneumonia is always a good idea, particularly for the elderly. But unfortunately, vaccines against a bacterial infection will not prevent you from getting the COVID-19 pneumonia caused by the coronavirus because it's a viral pneumonia. So a vaccine against a bacterial pneumonia won't stop it. Many health authorities are currently, however, also recommending getting vaccinated against the flu. That won't prevent you from getting COVID-19 either. 
but it will hopefully cut down on the number of severe flu cases that end up in the hospital occupying a bed that might be desperately needed by a COVID-19 patient. One thing that's really crippling us in this pandemic is that we don't know exactly who has had COVID-19. An unknown large number of people have gotten it, but don't know. They were never tested because they had mild symptoms or they had maybe no symptoms at all. That's incredibly important information though, because it could tell us who is now probably immune to the coronavirus. It's information that going forward is going to be essential as we try to get our societies back up and running. And that's where an antibody test comes in. It works like this. When it's infected with a pathogen, your body forms these proteins called antibodies. They're part of its immune response. And the antibodies it makes are tailored to that specific bug. Those antibodies remain in your system after you've gotten over the illness, helping to protect you from reinfection. An antibody test is a diagnostic for detecting them. So an antibody test for COVID-19 could tell us if you had it and maybe didn't even notice it. If that's the case, then you would theoretically no longer carry the bug or be able to infect anyone else and you could get back to work. The short answer to this is, is yes. What you're talking about here is what health professionals call a false negative. That means when someone with an active infection tests negative for the disease, even though they actually have it. One reason that could happen is that the test is, is simply not sensitive enough. A study from China indicated that current testing methods might return false negatives up to 30% of the time, but we still don't have a lot of data there. There will also be a time window at the beginning of an infection when the active infection won't yet show up in PCR, experts say possibly up to a week. Um, your chance of getting tested in this window are generally low though, as you're likely to not be showing many symptoms so early in the course of the infection, though that obviously depends on the testing strategy in your home country. Um, antibody tests for revealing previous infection likely won't be perfect either. From an epidemiological standpoint though, these tests are there to help reveal potential clusters. A lot of doctors are saying that if you know you've been exposed and or you have symptoms, you need to take the appropriate measures in terms of isolation, even if your test came back negative.